This is a video about force field analysis, how to use it and how to make one of our very own. Force field analysis is such a great tool, especially when we're in the business case or the feasibility study of our project, when we're figuring out if it's actually worthwhile making this change. Because we have the change idea in the middle here, and that's, this could be anything. This could be for a new product that we're creating, a, a new project, or a process change, or something that we're changing within the organization. Maybe we're moving an apartment, maybe we're moving buildings. What are the forces for this change? So what is supporting this change? What are these external forces or internal forces that are helping us make the change? But also, what are the forces that are opposing this change? What is going to get in our way? What is going to stop us from making this change, creating this product, or creating this new, brand new, wonderful thing that we need to create for our project? The best thing about force field analysis is it actually ranks all of these things. So if we've got, uh, we've got a couple of different ideas that are helping our change and but they've only got a, a rating of two so you know they're only helping a little bit or maybe they've got a rating of five and they're helping us a lot now we've got five ten we add all of these up 15 and 20 and we've got a total of 20 helping our change but over here we've got three and four which is seven and two is nine and uh, plus three is 12 in total. So we've got 12 points against our change. But that means overall, the forces are in our favor. And that is our force field analysis. And we know that maybe we should continue and we can go ahead because it's going to be worthwhile. Let's do a quick tutorial on how to create one of these for ourselves so we can use it in our business to do amazing things. If we were to start with a blank sheet, first of all, let's just set up the header, and that's really easy to do. Just a nice, beautiful golden line up the top and a few text boxes, and we'll speed this up just as we go along because this is fairly easy to do. then the really good stuff for our force field analysis is actually done through a table. So to insert a table, we go to insert table in the top left hand corner here. Now we actually want 12 columns and I think it's around four different rows. So we can only do 10 here. So we're going to put 10 in, then we're going to go to layout and insert another one to the right and insert another one to the right again. Let's increase this to the total uh, to total width of our sheet and increase the size just a little bit. Now we've got something to work with. Now in our table design, we don't want the header row, so that's okay. We don't want banded rows either. And so once we've done that, we can change our table design just to be blank. So this gives us a blank sheet to start working with. Going back to our table design, let's select our entire table and we can see we've got uh, rows and columns here. Let's go to the border line and we'll give ourselves a nice big dashed border. The pen color, let's make that maybe a, a lightish gray. And the border that we want is just all of our inside vertical borders. So this gives us a really good starting point. Now for our two middle ones, we actually want to select all of those, right click and merge those cells. And if we go back to home and put that in the middle, align the text to the middle as well, this gives us our, the decision or the change that we want to make. Now with these particular banded rows, let's go back to table design. On our left hand side, we also want the left border, or all of those left borders, let's do those, and all of our right borders. Now when we deselect that, you can see we've got all of our rows set up. For our very top row, we want that to just be words, so we're going to merge those cells. And we actually don't want any borders on this one, so we'll have no borders. Same over the right hand side here, let's merge these ones together and we'll get rid of the borders on this particular one. Now in the middle, let's select our middle here that we have merged together and we'll, we can just give this a bit of a background color, maybe a, maybe a nice light gray. Yep, that's quite nice. And we want the inside borders here to just be solid borders instead. So we're going to go back, select a solid border, do one on the left and one 
on the right. Last but not least, we're going to select the bottom row, oh, this particular bottom row, and we're going to merge this one as well. Now we can actually color this too. We can make this a bit of a, a darker color, I think. Maybe a nice maybe dark gray, maybe this one. That's, that's pretty nice. Same on the other side, right click and merge and right click and give ourselves that nice color. Now we're going to grab this row and just bring it down a little bit and bring down the other one a little bit as well. Now we can start putting text in here and this is going to be our totals. Let's make sure it's put in the middle and make sure the text is white just so it stands out nicely. Copy that all the way across to our other side, put that in the middle and in the middle again. Now we've still got one more row here as well, but we don't want to merge this one. We do want to, however, just get rid of the borders. If we, if we select these ones just over to the right and have no borders, let's say no border there, all these ones over to the left and select no borders again. Now we can bring this up a little bit, bring this one up a little bit too, bring this one up again, same on this, this particular side. Now let's select all of this and put our text over to the right hand side. And you'll see why this is important in a second, because we want to have numbers one, two, three, four, and five that really closely match up to these lines. Now on this side, we want them to be over to the left. So that's fine. We've got one, two, three, four, and five. Again, with these, let's put them in the middle. Make sure that they are, the text is aligned in the middle and the text color, maybe we'll just make that a little bit of a darker gray. Lastly, we want this side to be our forces for change. Put that in the middle and in the middle again and our forces against change. Let's make those colors a nice gray. And now we're starting to look really good. How quick was that to put together that nice, basically a little table for ourselves to use. We'll just uh, make sure that this is aligned quite nicely. And now we can get started on the final piece, which is inserting these arrows for the change and against the change. We go to insert shapes. Let's select a nice large style arrow and we can put this on the right hand side, on the left hand side here. For this one, let's just get rid of the outline and let's make it, because it's for the change, let's make the fill a nice, just a bit of a greeny color because we're, you know, it's a positive thing. Uh, we also want to double click here and we want to say, you know, this is maybe item one, whatever the item is that's for the change that we're wanting to make. Let's make the text a little bit smaller. And if we right click, click this item, format the shape, we also just want to go to text options and the margins. So over on the right hand side here, ideally would have 0 0.05, not too big of a margin. So let's just make sure these margins are a little bit smaller. Uh, definitely not uh, a quarter of a centimeter or even larger. And that way it, it'll just fill out the entire arrow. So it'll look a little bit nicer. Control C and Control V to copy a few of these all the way down and then match them up to the, the lines that we want them to be rated against. So we've got four for this one, maybe a five for this one, a two for this one, and a three for this one. Of course, this could be anything that you choose. If we select all of them by holding Control and clicking them, Control C and Control V to copy and paste. Let's put these ones over here, select the, the far left and drag them all at once all the way over to the other side. Now we'll drag them just a little bit more and now we've done them all in one go. If we right click, make the fill maybe a, a bit of a darker orange. So these are against, these are the items against our change. And all of a sudden we've got all of our totals. So five plus four is nine plus two is 11 plus three is 14. So we've got 14 for and 14 against in this case until we change it to suit the decision that we're trying to make. And now you and I have created a force field analysis template that you can take and use to showcase to your manager for the forces for or against a particular change that you're trying to make in your company. 
I hope you take it and create something amazing and do something great. I truly believe in you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.